Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we are going to look at sorting of arrays. Yes, there's lots to learn about arrays, so we are still busy with arrays. And this code that you see in front of you really needs to be studied. So I am going to explain the code to you. We have a for loop. The aim is really for us to sort our arrays. And the outer loop, I have used the for loop variable i out and it loops from 1 to very important i count minus 1. You will see here in the next line the for loop for i in, that's the inner loop, runs to from i out plus 1. So therefore I have to have a minus 1 at the top here or I will get an access violation trying to access an item in my array that is not there. So if I have filled my array completely, then by adding a plus one here, it will go to an item of the array that does not exist. So my inner loop loops from I out plus one all the way to the end. And what I'm doing here in my if statement, this if statement determines whether I'm sorting the array array marks from highest to lowest or lowest to highest. So in your if statement is the array according to which you want to sort these arrays by. And don't worry too much whether you're using a less than or greater than symbol here. If it's sorting in the wrong order, you just swap it around for the other one. So this is what determines whether I'm sorting from highest to lowest or lowest to highest and according to which array I want to sort. So it does not matter whether you put I in on the left or I out on the right, you can swap them around as well. But once I find a mark in this instance in the position I in that is smaller than the mark in I out, I then have a begin and an end and I need to make sure that I swap all the values. This is swapping the values in the arrays. So this method I hope you learned in grade 10 how do we swap values into variables and all we're doing now is we're using arrays and we're swapping the values in the position i in with the one in i out so i start with my keeper i can start with either i in or i out on the right but what is important is if i have i in here on the right in the next line, I in must be on the left of the assignment statement. And then it will be followed by your other for loop variable, in this case, I out. If I out is on the right, in the next line, I out will be on the left. And I will end with my keeper. Declare your keeper variables with the same data type as your arrays. It just simplifies the swapping so you don't need to use string to int and so on. So if you can draw these red lines from the right to the left and you've started with your keeper and ended with your keeper, then you know you're right. But we don't want to sort only the names because if I take your class list and I only sort your names, your names won't be matching with your surnames and they won't be matching with your marks. So since we have parallel arrays, this is an example of having only three parallel arrays, I also need to now swap in the same way I need to swap the values in array surname and then I will swap the values that were stored in array mark. The best way to understand exactly what is happening during the process of sorting arrays is to complete a trace table. So quickly grab a pen and paper. You can use the code here at the, at the top. We're just going to, to simplify just swap array mark and see what happens and we are storing in array mark 1 will be 50 and in array mark 2 will be 20 and I've indicated this in the trace table. I've helped you with the two first two lines of code. This is line number 1. So here the variable that is changing is i out. So I'm completing a 1 there because currently i out has the value of 1. In line 2 I in now gets the value of I out plus 1. So now I'm putting a 2 in the column called I in. See if you can complete this trace table. Here is the memo to the trace table. So if you have a look, what is in front of your screen now is 
all of this code is executed while I out is one and if you did this correctly you will find that here at the bottom I have 60 stored in array mark one so that is the purpose of the outer loop I have now stored the, the highest value in the position one so while I out is one I'm going to scroll down just so that you can have a look if you were able to to get this trace table and at the end you will have the highest mark 60 was stored in this column then 50 in the next one then 30 in the next one and then 20 in the last one so now I have sorted my marks from highest to lowest and now it's your time to practice again so go back to your program and go to the menu called sort by marks and see if you can sort these marks from highest to lowest according to the mark and display then their information. This is the memo for sorting of the marks. Remember that we will have to also swap the grade so the grade still fits with the learner in that position. And once I have sorted, I can very easily just use the display procedure. This is the advantage of using procedures. I can use the same code that I've written once and now I can display the arrays. While you're running the program and you've clicked on this menu, the arrays are only sorted in the RAM. So if you would stop the running of the program and display these arrays again, they won't be sorted anymore. Now you can try the menu sort by surnames and we want to sort the surnames in alphabetical order and we want to then display all their values. Note that there's a difference here. We're not using the display procedure anymore because we are displaying the index numbers of the arrays. So here is the memo for sort by surname and we're using the same code here. Remember to use your upcase and swapping all the values of all the arrays since we are now displaying an extra column, we're displaying the K of our for loop to indicate the position of these items in my array, I can't use my display procedure anymore and I have to write this code again. So I'm clearing the rich edit. I have another column, so I'll need another tab stop. I'm setting up my tab stops and my headings. And here I'm displaying the arrays in the positions K and that will produce for me the output of sorting these arrays according to the surname. I hope this information helped you and that I will see you soon. Next we are going to add values to our arrays in the next lessons. Please leave some comments if anything is unclear or if there is something else that you would like to learn.